With cor pulmonal, cor is Latin for heart, and pulmonal is Latin for lungs. Cor pulmonal, then, is a relationship between the two, and it's when a disorder of the lungs causes dysfunction of the heart. Normally, deoxygenated venous blood from the body goes into the right atrium of the heart. From there, it goes into the right ventricle and then gets pumped to the lungs where it's reoxygenated as it goes through the pulmonary circulation. The pulmonary circulation is a low resistance system with pressures ranging between 10 and 14 millimeters of mercury. After going through the lungs, oxygenated blood goes into the left atrium and then into the left ventricle and finally gets pumped back out to the body. When the heart can't pump enough blood to meet the body's demands, it's initially called heart dysfunction and can worsen to a point where it's called heart failure. This can happen in two ways. Either it's systolic heart failure, where the ventricles can't pump blood hard enough during systole, or diastolic heart failure, where not enough blood fills the ventricles during diastole. Heart failure can affect the right ventricle, the left ventricle, or both ventricles. So someone might have right-sided heart failure, left-sided heart failure, or both, which is called biventricular heart failure. Core pulmonal is when a lung disorder causes right-sided heart dysfunction that can develop into right-sided heart failure. Lung disorders make it harder to oxygenate the blood, which can lead to hypoxia or low oxygen levels. In response, this triggers a process called hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. To help describe this, let's say that you have a couple pulmonary arterioles here, pulmonary meaning they're in the lungs, and then you've also got the alveoli of the lungs as well as oxygen being exchanged between the two. If one of these alveoli is poorly ventilated, the corresponding arteriole vasoconstricts to divert blood away from it. This actually works pretty well, but when lots of alveoli are poorly ventilated, like with a lung disorder, then they all start to vasoconstrict, and the mechanism backfires. When lots of arterioles vasoconstrict together, there's an increase in resistance, and this leads to pulmonary hypertension which is when the pulmonary blood pressure rises above 25 millimeters of mercury. The high pulmonary pressure makes it hard for the right ventricle to pump blood into the pulmonary circulation. In acute lung disorders like a pulmonary embolism, where a blood clot blocks blood flow to pulmonary artery, the result is a rapid increase in right ventricular pressure that makes the right ventricle stretch out like a water balloon. In chronic lung disorders, Prolonged high pressure causes the right ventricle to hypertrophy, or grow, so it can contract with more force. The hypertrophy here is concentric, which means that the new sarcomeres are added in parallel with the existing ones. So as the heart muscle wall enlarges, it crowds into the ventricular chamber space, resulting in less room for blood to fill the heart, and that leads to diastolic heart failure. The increase in right ventricular muscle mass also means that there's a greater demand for oxygen, and to make matters worse, the coronaries get squeezed down by this extra muscle, so that even less blood gets delivered to the right ventricle. More demand and reduced supply leads to right ventricular ischemia, and that leads to weaker contractions and systolic heart failure. Core pulmonal results from pulmonary hypertension, which typically comes from one of three categories of diseases. Something that damages the lung tissue, like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, something that damages the pulmonary vessels themselves, like chronic thromboembolisms or recurrent blood clots, and something that affects the spine or rib cage, like kyphoscoliosis, where the spine is curved and the lungs can't fully expand. An important distinction here is that left heart dysfunction or failure can also result in pulmonary hypertension, but this would not be considered core pulmonal because the initial problem is with the heart itself, not with the lungs. Because core pulmonal stems from pulmonary hypertension, the symptoms are all related to the backup of blood in the venous system. That being said, pulmonary hypertension can lead to severe shortness of breath, and from blood being backed up in the body, it can cause jugular venous distension, hepatosplenomegaly, and edema. The diagnosis of core pulmonal is usually made with an echocardiogram that shows evidence of increased pressure in the pulmonary arteries in the right ventricle. Follow-up tests can be done to identify the underlying cause. For example, spirometry can be done to look for chronic lung disease. Treatment for core pulmonal targets this underlying lung condition. Supplemental oxygen can help with hypoxia-induced vasoconstriction, and digoxin can help improve the contractility of the heart. 
And finally, medications like diuretics can help reduce the overall fluid buildup in the body. All right, as a quick recap, core pulmonale is right heart hypertrophy, dysfunction, or failure caused by pulmonary hypertension from a lung condition. This results in systemic fluid congestion, leading to jugular venous distension, hepatosplenomegaly, and edema. After diagnosis with echocardiography and potentially follow-up tests like spirometry, treatment includes addressing the underlying lung condition and administering supplemental oxygen as well as medication.